I saw Mariah five years ago in Australia. I've always wanted to see her in concert and I really did enjoy the show. However, the Asian leg of the tour did get some bad reviews. Many noticed the change in her voice and were quite critical of certain performances. I definitely noticed that she didn't have the 90s Mariah's voice. But isn't that to be expected after singing for over 20 years? No doubt her voice has changed. Some of these changes were deliberate, but others are due to the demand she has placed on her voice. The vocal cords have to be exercised, strengthened and maintained. Just like an athlete trains to look after their body. We can't expect a 45 year old athlete to be in their prime. So should we expect Mariah's singing voice to be as good as it was 25 years ago? So what changes has that phenomenal voice gone through over the years? And can she still hit the high notes that made her famous to begin with? Here are some reasons her voice has changed over the years. Change in singing style. Mariah has made no secret of her escape from ex-husband record executive Tommy Mottola. He signed her to Columbia Records in 1990. In 93, when Mariah was only 23 years old, they married in a lavish ceremony. He was 20 years her senior. Describing married life with Mottola, Mariah said, there was no freedom for me as a human being. Mariah split from Mottola in 98. Speaking of the split, she said, I was with someone at the time that had a lot of control over my life. He was older than me by a lot and had a lot of power and he wanted me to remain away from people, like sequestered. I had to get permission to leave the house. At one point, you and your friends referred to this Bedford mansion you lived in with Tommy Mottola as Sing Sing. <laughs> so I'm supposed to believe that you were almost in prison there and you were expected to sing. To sing. And sing. <laughs> she said she never thought she would get out of there and would probably end up haunting the house dead. After the split, she took more creative control of her music and the direction of her career. She worked with hip-hop producers and adopted a new singing style. Although her fans were used to her belting out more breathy, whispery style. When you love someone so deeply, they become your life. I have a little more wine and I'll try and drink you out of my head. Try, 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 try. And I'll lay you as for her image, she often spoke about how her ex wanted her to have a more conservative, wholesome image. She wore shirts that showed no cleavage and cut off jeans which were not too short. Many thought Mariah was shy and reserved, but that couldn't have been further from the truth. Since your separation, you have changed your um, physical image. You dress differently. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Very differently. Is it fun? It's a lot of it's fun. It's sexier. It's, it's definitely much more true to who I am. She wanted to break out into a more sexy image, collaborate with rappers, and even bust a move in her videos here and there. When she separated from Tommy Mottola, Mariah did not hold back. She collaborated with hip-hop mogul, Puff Daddy, aka Diddy, and producers such as Missy Elliott and Q-Tip. The album Butterfly was released in 1997. Honey was a debut single, and the video depicts Mariah escaping from an old Italian man who had her tied up. Clearly it was a dig at Matola and a depiction of her life with him. The Butterfly album had a smoother R&B style where she debuted her new singing voice. She had sultry, breathy vocals that complemented the soul and blues inspired themes of the album. Mariah no doubt knows what she is doing vocally, but this style of singing can strain the voice in the long run, as it causes the singer to rely on their throat more than their diaphragm. Singing in the head voice, as opposed to singing from the gut. This style by nature is damaging, especially if done over a long period of time. Whistle register overuse. Her ability to sing in the whistle register, the range between high C and F6, set her apart from other artists. It is not a typical range to reach, and few mainstream singers can do it. Even those who can, do it sparingly. But Mariah made it look easy.
The Palace now has a queen. And the goosebumps will continue from Auburn Hills. She can also sing in a very low register, so her range is out of this world. Singing in the whistle register can put a strain on the voice, especially if used for over 20 years. There are other singers who can hit this note, but they don't do it too often in order to preserve their voice. Even if you train to do it properly, it can still be risky. When singing in the whistle register, one can easily make a mistake and injure their vocal cords. Ariana Grande was accused of faking her whistle register when she did a cover of Mariah's Emotions. Last I checked, she hadn't sung the song live, so people assumed the whistle register was just created in a music studio. If she could reach that note, why not do it live on a regular basis like Mariah did, right? But Ariana explained that she doesn't use it often because she doesn't want to damage her voice. Because I, I would never like fake anything or um, or try and make you guys think that I can do something that I can't. Because But I really, it's not my thing. I'm not trying to make it my gimmick. It's hers. She's owned it for years. She's the best vocalist on the face of the planet. And in no way was I trying to compare myself to her or show off or fake anybody out. And um, the, the reason why I'm making this video is because I did a live version of the video a few weeks before I made the, the studio version. And I didn't do the whistles in that version because I'm not, I'm not used to doing it and I don't practice them a lot and I don't want to hurt myself. I don't really know how if I'm doing it properly at all. Um, when I did the Emotions cover, the full studio version, my voice teacher was there and Eric Vitro. Shout out to Eric Vitro, he's the best. But he was there so he warmed me up properly and made sure that I was doing it properly and I wasn't going to hurt myself. It's, you know, nobody can do it like Mariah. She uses it in many of her live performances. If used correctly, it is not considered damaging to the voice. But there are bound to be days where mistakes are made, or the note is forced on certain occasions. At these times, vocal damage may occur. Even the top athletes have bad days, where one wrong move can lead to a twisted knee or ankle. Singing at Mariah's level is no different. Singing in the whistle register may have taken its toll on her voice and exacerbated her nodules. Nodules. Nodules are small lumps that appear on the vocal cords. They can hinder a singer's ability to hit certain notes. They can also cause the tone of the singer's voice to change forever. They can be surgically removed, but the procedure is very risky. If successful, there will be no lasting damage from the surgery. But if unsuccessful, the singer can lose their ability to sing well at all. This is what happened to Julie Andrews in the 90s. Her signature soprano voice was gone post-surgery. She had to pursue other career endeavours as a result. Some singers prefer to just live with their nodules and leave them alone and embrace the changes that occur in their voice. Mariah's mother was an opera singer. She practiced singing as a child, emulating the soprano vocals she grew up listening to. In doing this, she did push her vocals to the limit at a young age. That may be how she developed nodules in the first place. They are usually a singer's worst nightmare but for Mariah, she has used them to her advantage. Speaking of her nodules, she said, they're the reason why I have the high register and the belting register, and I can still be husky. A lot of people couldn't sing through the nodules the way I do. I've learned to sing through my vocal cords. However, straining her voice may have become part of her singing technique. Singing through the nodules and using them to reach the high notes may have come at a price. In the early years, it didn't cause much harm. Doing it for decades will take its toll. Singers need to get regular vocal rest to prevent nodules forming and those who have them must rehabilitate their voice. Work ethic. Mariah is a very hard worker and has performed to the point of exhaustion. She described the lead up to her 2000 breakdown as constantly working and getting sick. Her doctor put her on vocal rest but she was booked solid with shows of course. Mariah has also suffered from insomnia for decades. This was actually a symptom of bipolar disorder, which she was diagnosed with in 2001. She didn't reveal her diagnosis for 17 years. Dealing with exhaustion, both mentally and physically, is bound to have an effect on her voice. Thankfully, these days, Mariah is not afraid to rest and seek the help she needs. She is human after all, even if she does have the voice of an angel. Lip syncing. Lip syncing is no longer what bad singers rely on. Some of the most accomplished vocalists lip sync to a pre-recorded performance or track. It may be for practical reasons, such as the venue not having the equipment for live performances, or an unexpected sickness or voice loss. Some artists choose to lip sync from time to time to preserve their voice. 
They may be on vocal rest, but still have shows to do. Over the years, Mariah has lip synced occasionally as a way of protecting her voice. The songs that Mariah sings pushes the vocals to the limit. Her songs are not easy to sing, even for Mariah herself sometimes. In recent years, she may have relied on lip-syncing certain parts of her songs, such as the whistle register part. While I'm sure she is still capable of hitting that note, it is no longer beneficial for her to do so all the time. When she sings her old songs, singing in the whistle register will only damage her voice further. So from time to time, she needs help with a little technology. This doesn't take away from the legend of a singer she is. Mariah first wowed us with her vocals at the 33rd Grammys Awards show. This established her as a vocal force to be reckoned with. Soon after this performance, her debut album reached the top spot on Billboard. Her first single was Vision of Love. No doubt, she is a singing legend and also an accomplished songwriter. We have seen her through her triumphs and tribulations, at highest points and her lowest. She is a diva who overcomes and is no stranger to phenomenal comebacks. She recently received her Lifetime Achievement Award and showed us why she is the queen that she is. That truly all things are possible with God. Okay. Without getting into all the drama, all the ups and downs of my career, we've all seen them, we all make mistakes. Um, there's been a few memes. <laughs> uh, I guess I've always felt like an outsider, someone who doesn't quite belong anywhere. And I still feel like that lost interracial child who had a lot of nerve to believe I could succeed at anything at all in this world. But, and this is the truth, but I did believe because I had to. The truth is I've dedicated my life to my music, my saving grace, and to my fans who are unlike any other entity that I've ever known. They've lifted me out of the depths of hell and brought me back with their devotion and love. I want to thank all the people who've been with me on this journey. What's your favourite Mariah album? And what do you think about the changes in her voice? Thanks for watching. Subscribe and click the bell for more videos.